Hello, you're watching Sideline. Today in our studio, Ms. Beatrice Marta Iscuerta, Country Director of Jewish Mongolia NGO, has arrived. So, Ms. Uh, Beatrice, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you very much for inviting us. So, uh, JIRS is a French non-governmental organization which uh, operates in 13 countries around the world, including Mongolia. So, to our audience, how would you introduce uh, the JIRS Mongolia non-governmental organization? So, JIRS, as you said, is an international organization with more than 40 years working in energy and climate. And in Mongolia, our interventions in the field seek to improve the resilience of the urban and rural population in face of climate change, to improve the living conditions and to stop migrations from rural area to the city on one side. And on the other side, we uh, want to alleviate the situation of long-term migrants in the capital city. Mm -hmm. Jir's first approach to Mongolia in 2010, you started building passive solar greenhouses and eco cellars to support the farmers. So could you tell us the reason why you chose Mongolia as one of your target countries? Yes, so we were already working in the region and uh, we developed a project uh, in Ladakh, north of India, where we uh, develop uh, passive solar greenhouses adapted to this, uh, uh, to this region, which is very cold as Mongolia, and also eco-cellars. And uh, we had a lot of success, uh, received a lot of, lot of awards. And thanks to that, Caritas Mongolia uh, contacted us to become partners in 2010 of a project that was aiming to um, promote gardening in the backyard of the gay area uh, households. Uh, so we started working with them and we realized about the importance of introducing organic agriculture in the rural area of Mongolia as a way of diversifying the work opportunities and also um, uh, promoting uh, local organic farming as well as improving the diet and also uh, ensuring the food security. Mm -hmm. So you started uh, with your uh, farming projects first and uh, after that you switched your focus to the energy sector mm -hmm. and you started implementing only the energy uh, projects. So what was the reason why you changed your focus from farming projects to the energy sector? Yes, we started here, uh, as I said, uh, promoting the organic local vegetable sector and uh, we work uh, during many years until 2019. Well, we're still working now with the last project mm -hmm. uh, as a way of uh, exceeding uh, the, the uh, sector. And the reason why we switched in 2019 into more energy was because uh, the strategy overall of the strategy of overall the NGO uh, was more focusing on our core expertise that is uh, energy and poverty alleviation mm -hmm. and in our aim to to support the energy transition of Mongolia we look to the sectors that were uh, consuming more energy and this is for instance the construction sector uh, where we where the energy is consumed in not in an efficient way mm -hmm. that means a lot of greenhouses gases emissions contributing to climate change, but also air pollution, which is a really uh, a problem and issue in Mongolia. That's why we decided to focus more on the construction sector and also because we already had the experience in the region and uh, as well because there were already local actors working in organic agriculture, mm -hmm. where we could hand over and just uh, continue working, uh, promoting the, the energy technologies, but not continue working on uh, agriculture, which is a bit out beyond our, our expertise. Mm -hmm. So uh, the project that you started as an energy project in order to uh, focus on the construction sector, mm -hmm. uh, which you were talking about, is called Simatir. 
and yes. you conducted uh, uh, you conducted the first phase, and now you are working on the second uh, phase of the project. So, what was the result of these Sematir projects? Yes, so Sematir project is a project that started in 2017, mm -hmm. uh, the first phase. Uh, until 2019, and it is um, concentrate in Arhangai. Uh, it's a territorial approach to, to climate change, and, and it was aiming in this first phase to support the local authorities uh, to mainstream uh, climate change issues and also solutions into the plannings. So we started conducting a vulnerability climate change assessment in the mm -hmm. 19 Zooms of Arhangai, asking to the population what were their main uh, issues, uh, problems, how the environment was changing, and, and also what could be done in order to reverse the situation. And we cross-cut this information with scientific data. Uh, we end up doing an atlas with all this information give it, given to decision makers and also sharing with the population. Uh, we share it with 3,100 uh, people in the, in the IMAC. And also we conducted two pilots as an example of mitigation and adaptation projects that could be implemented. For instance, we constructed for the first time the uh, energy efficiency domestic uh, shelter for domestic violence victims. Mm -hmm. And it's already, uh, it's, it has already benefited uh, more than 40 people and it has also economical savings. And as well uh, as an example of uh, how we could uh, use renewable energies, we, su we supply an archaeological center in Arhanga with solar, uh, uh, solar photovoltaic system and also uh, solar collector systems for hot water. And these two examples were uh, aiming to show that actions can be taken in order to fight against climate change and improve the living conditions of the population. Mm -hmm. So in the framework of the CIMATI project, uh, you conducted the vulnerability assessment yes. and then you gave the data to the decision makers yes. so they will uh, conduct more uh, informed uh, projects. Yes. And also, uh, there were like, uh, one of the examples you mentioned was the uh, shelter for the victims of domestic violence and you said it's an uh, energy efficient uh, building so how did you build this energy efficient building so we uh, can't with the government and all the departments that were in, involved in the in the shelter because uh, even if the regulation is saying what services it should provide then there were no blueprints to follow uh, so we all sit together, we all discuss what was needed uh, to, to construct. We visit also other shelters before we uh, construct it. And when we constructed it, we consider the local materials. For instance, in Arhanga, there is a volcanic rock. So we use it for constructing with volcanic rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also took the opportunity of building this uh, this. A public building to train the private sector on how to uh, do um, a correct insulation and how to implement it in a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, you came up with your insulation uh, ideas. Yes. So uh, this project, uh, I think, it led to another project called SOAP, which is the um, project that is focusing on the insulations of houses. So about the insulation, would you say this is the better way than uh, switching stoves or maybe uh, burning another type of coal? Yes, yeah, so it's true. Uh, air pollution is a very complex problem with not easy solution uh, and we need an integration of solutions. So basically, uh, from our point of view, what the government is doing uh, is, is right, is good uh, to uh, all these uh, efficient uh, coal and also uh, promoting electricity consumption and electrical heaters and the free tariff at night. But what we think is that it could be more effective if the house is insulated because uh, the insulation means that uh, the worm is kept, is kept inside. 
So if the worm is kept inside, then you need less coal to burn, to warm up and to keep it warm, and also less uh, electricity. Uh, so that's why we think uh, we need to integrate all these solutions to make them more effi effective mm -hmm. and efficient. Yeah. Yes. So about the insulation uh, packages, how is like one insulation uh, package costs? And also, could you tell, tell us about the loan uh, opportunities? Yes. So basically, uh, just to um, uh, contextualize a little bit, uh, uh, after Semater 1, we did Semater 2, where we are uh, now supporting the, in Arhangai, the local authorities to implement energy efficiency in public buildings, but mm -hmm. also to improve the local energy efficiency plan. And this is what we are doing in energy efficiency in the rural area. And then in Ulaanbaatar, since 2018, we have started the switch of air pollution project that aims to decrease air pollution by uh, improving the energy efficiency of individual houses. So in this project, uh, we are intermediating the, the market to put in contact the different actors, uh, households with banks, with suppliers, with craftsmen, all together. So in, in this project, we realized that uh, the gear area population uh, was very uh, diverse and we were having a great majority of the population with a very low investment capacity to implement insulation. So we develop a different package mm -hmm. uh, that can be implemented according to your um, investment capacity. And in that sense, uh, we have these different uh, packages that you go, uh, you can do it step by step. So you can start with very simple uh, solutions that you can start from now. And then if you have more money, then uh, you can uh, start insulating the roof, uh, where is the biggest energy loses uh, found in the, in the house. And then uh, uh, keep uh, uh, improving the thickness of the roof mm -hmm. and improving the insulation of the walls. So there is uh, the possibility to accede to green loans uh, through the Has Bank and also Han Bank in this moment. And these loans uh, have eight percentage of interest. They are not requiring uh, down payment. Mm -hmm. And now um, they can be also provided for retired people, which is very important for us because majority of uh, our uh, of the people who were approaching us for this insulation were retired people. Uh, the solutions uh, can go uh, from 3 million to group uh, up to more, depending on what the, the, the person is planning to do. Also 1.5 to 3 million, 6 million, depending on the size of the house. Uh, the only uh, thing is that uh, the green loans are requiring at least 20 percentage of energy savings. So the solutions that uh, in order to have uh, access to these green loans, you have to uh, select a solution that is over 20 percentage of energy savings. And also uh, you need to meet the requirements of the bank, which are explicitized in our website. Mm -hmm. which are explained in our website. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so the green loans will be granted to the households that choose the uh, uh, package with 20% or more energy savings. Yes. So are all your uh, packages 20% or more or, or like how many of them uh, qualifies to the green loan? So basically... Um, the simple solutions are the ones that you can do in hand. If you do all of them, is eight percentage of energy savings. Then, uh, if you um, uh, put five centimeters of roof insulation, you can have also thirteen percentage of energy savings. And from fifteen centimeters of roof insulation, you are already reaching the twenty percentage of energy savings. And then uh, you can, um, uh, if you um, insulate the roof uh, according to the technical code, which is 20 centimeters, and then you insulate your walls, the foundation, and uh, you change the windows uh, into a double glass uh, and the floor, then you can reach 70 or, or more energy efficiency. Uh, let's talk about the future of your uh, activities. Yes. So will you complement the, the second phase of SOAP? And about the cemetery, you're working on this insulating the 
uh, public buildings like mm -hmm. a kindergarten and uh, like how many more kindergartens w will you work on? What do you think? Mm -hmm. So uh, we are in this moment looking for funds for the second phase of uh, switch of air pollution and we aim to scale it up and replicate in Ulaanbaatar, but also uh, to replicate it outside Ulaanbaatar in the province. And in this sense, uh, we got the support from the Ministry of Construction as we, and we are working with them uh, to develop this new phase. And in, in the case of uh, Semater, in, we are going to conduct two pilots, uh, two kindergartens, as an example of uh, what type of installation can be done. And our aim is to support the IMAC to develop, uh, improve the energy efficiency uh, uh, local action plans for buildings, where uh, we will support to prioritize the actions and things that can be done in order to benefit a majority of the population. And this is a, a pilot. Uh, what we are going to do is to adapt the local energy efficiency action plan of Ulaanbaatar developed by um, GIZ, uh, the German Development Agency. We are working with them to adapt it into the province, considering the gaps, because we already conducted an extensive baseline study and realized about these problems, why uh, even the regulation is there, is not being enforced, uh, where are there is problems, where are these gaps, why are these mistakes always being repeated? You said that you're working on to fill the gap in uh, especially the rural provinces uh, like planning. And what kind of changes have you been trying to uh, make? Yes, so like the f gaps we identified were, for instance, um, they were lacking of uh, human resources uh, for inspections or uh, then uh, some blueprints uh, were not adapted to the con context. So uh, in the case of Arhangai, they have a ter thermofrost uh, layer that it needs to be considered when you construct a building. Otherwise, um, this thermal breach uh, can give a lot of problems. So these kind of things need to be included in the blueprints then um, the uh, local, uh, the general architect and also like the ERC uh, representative, they need to have all the tools and they need to have also the skills to be able to follow up all the process of construction and to ensure that things are going. So we were uh, also involving them in trainings uh, in, to improve the skills so they know how to uh, maintain it and operate the system properly and, and what to do. Uh, um, small changes uh, that uh, if uh, not very expensive to implement, but that can make a difference. Mm -hmm. So we were working with them. They were very involved and, and, and thanks to that, uh, we were understanding what were their main challenges or problems they, they, they were facing. And, and the IMA has done a very good effort and is, is doing very well. And also, um, uh, we just want to improve it. And, and we are very happy that they are collaborating with us very closely so we can understand their main problems, challenges. For instance, the thermal camera. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a thermal camera to check how was the uh, thermal insulation being done. And this kind of uh, small things uh, that makes a difference, this is what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, unfortunately, our time is coming to an end. So, what final message would you like to give to our audience? <laughs> thank you. Yes, so the final message I would like to give to the audience is that uh, all of you can be protagonists of the change. You can contribute to Mongolia energy transition to make it a more greenish Mongolia future and to uh, have a better environment and living conditions. So. Do not wait, uh, you can do uh, anything from now. Uh, we have in our website information about simple solutions, so you can start implementing it, also encouraging your uh, family, neighbors uh, to do these simple solutions, because uh, like one, each drop, no, make an ocean. Uh, so, so each uh, of us, we can do a big change uh, in, to, in the fight against the climate change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much, Miss um, Beatrice, for coming to our studio and talking about the activities of your NGO. Thank you very much for inviting us. 
You watch Sightline. Today we talk to Ms. Beatrice Marta Escuerda, Country Director of Yours Mongolia INGO, about its activities and projects. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.